Hello, 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 my beautiful, beautiful bread friends, beautiful, handsome, attractive, creative bread friends, whoever you are. Um, today I'm going to be making three bread machines worth of the same dough with some subtle differences because I have a recipe that is kind of a chameleon recipe, I guess you could say. Maybe, I don't know if that's right but it can do double or even triple duty, and it's a really good one. Um, I wanna first make a little couple of shout outs. I wanna shout out to my friend Cece. Cece, you know who you are. And I wore these earrings for you because you always notice what I'm wearing. <laughs> um, I actually bought these earrings in London um, at the Wallace Collection, which is a really cool museum. So I wore these for Cece and um, she knows why. And I also wanna make a call out to my friend Gay, who has the most amazing YouTube channel called Apron Strings. Apron Strings! <laughs> and she does some baking, some cooking. She's a Southern Belle, and she has thousands of YouTubes and thousands of subscribers. And she does a lot of Tex-Mex and comfort food and She's just the, has the best personality. Her kitchen is gorgeous. And go to Apron Strings and see some of my friend Gay's videos. She's absolutely incredible. So those are my two shout outs. Well, how can I not shout out my hubby who always takes my video? Um, he's amazing. He's always willing to do this for me. And I really, <laughs> you fall asleep over there. I really appreciate him. So I'm not going to weigh and measure the ingredients in front of you because it would take a long time and that would get a little boring. But the recipe I am making today is pumpernickel bread and or a sweet brown bread that we used to call squaw bread. And evidently squaw is not a politically correct term. We don't call it that anymore. Um, you can Google that if you like, but it's no longer called that. So I'm just calling it brown bread or sweet brown bread. And actually it's the same recipe and it's the funniest thing. If I put caraway seeds in it, it tastes, it's pumpernickel bread. Really good, true pumpernickel bread. But if I don't put the caraway seeds in, it's sweet brown bread. Especially when I put the little oats on top that look like sweet brown bread. And um, the third one is just going to be the pumpernickel bread with caraway seeds, but I'm also adding some raisins because my cute daddy requested that. So after I turn the camera off or after my hubby turns the camera off, I will fill these up with the ingredients and pop them in the machines and set them for dough cycle. And I will show you how my dough progresses and if I need to add water or flour by checking my dough five minutes after kneading, you will get to see that too. I am still in the middle of uh, loading up my bread pans. I'm not quite done, but I wanted to show you, if you have multiple machines, I actually label mine one, two, and three to match up with bread machine one, bread machine two, bread machine three. I have the dates that I got them approximately, and just I wanna know if something breaks that the pan and the bread machine belong together. I also, if I'm making more than one bread, I use these little post-it notes to make sure that I don't get confused. So this first one will be pumpernickel that has the caraway seeds in it. The second one will be the sweet brown bread, no caraway seeds. And the third one, my daddy's request, the Merzy Dotes and Dozy Dotes singer, <laughs> wanted pumpernickel with caraway and raisins. So that's um, why I have all these little post-it notes on there. And this is just one of my little organizational thingies that I do. Uh, this recipe calls for cocoa powder. And as you can see, it has a lot of lumps. And so what I do, and I cannot do this, I don't think, but uh, so I have a little strainer and I'm going to I'm gonna do it into another bowl, but actually, but for right now. And I'm good, I'm holding the camera and the strainer and the 
So what I do is I'm gonna do another container after a month, but I'm just gonna push it through so that all the lumps are gone. So that's um, what I will do with this whole thing. And then I'll lay it out for my bread, bread dough. So you can see I'm going from lumps to nice and smooth. So I, I mean, the lumps would probably get broken up in the bread maker, but sometimes I'm a little nervous about that. So I take this extra step. So I'm gonna tell you about the recipe. Uh, the recipe is 270 grams of water. You don't have to write this down. It'll all be written up in the description and I'll tell you where to find that in a minute. 270 grams of water, 17 grams of, I use grapeseed oil, don't use olive oil, but you could use vegetable oil, canola oil, any neutral oil. Um, 104 grams of molasses, 206 grams of bread flour, 120 grams of rye flour, sorry about the glare of my pendant lights up above, and 141 grams of whole wheat flour, 21 grams of cocoa powder. It won't taste chocolatey, but it'll, it sort of mellows out the, the taste of the rye and the wheat and gives it, oh, it's just so good. Uh, 10 grams of salt, eight grams of SAF instant yeast, even though it doesn't say that right there. So in bread machine number one, which is going to be the standard pumpernickel with caraway, I do put the caraway seeds in there ahead of time because look, they are so tiny. They look like, pardon the expression, little ants. <laughs> and they mix in, you don't have to put these in at the ad beep, they can just go right in at the beginning. And I used actually like a coffee scoop and it's one eighth of a cup. I put two of those scoops in for rye bread, but a little less for this bread. In bread pan number two, this is going to be the sweet brown bread. Did not add caraway seeds, otherwise it's the same. And then this third one, right now it's the same as the first one, it has the caraway seeds. However, when I get my ad beep, I will add some raisins for my cute daddy. Um, if you didn't catch my last video, which was the, uh, what was it? The O.T. Dainty Wheaty Bread. <laughs> my dad sings a song at the beginning. If uh, you didn't catch it, you really should, especially if you're uh, old enough to remember mares eat oats and does eat oats, and I, I will not go on from there. Um, so I'm going to put my three lovely bread pans into the bread makers. Oh, regarding the recipe. So when you are watching this video, if you look at the bottom right corner of the screen where you see me, my kitchen, etc., just under that in the white part, there's a little arrow down. And you click that down and then there's a description. And in the description, I always put the whole recipe. I don't make you email me for it. I don't make you go back and watch the whole video and write things down. Um, from here, you can just probably do a copy paste or a screenshot and get your recipe and not have to worry about catching me as I go in the video. I think that's ridiculous. So I'm gonna get these going and I will keep you posted as how the dough progresses. A lot of people write and ask, do you have this recipe in cups? And I'm sorry, I don't. Once I, I invent a recipe, I invent it in grams because it's easier. <laughs> I know that one loaf of bread takes between four and 500 grams of flour and I go from there and, and I do pretty well. I just wanna show you, I had water, grapeseed oil, molasses, bread flour, rye flour, whole wheat flour, cocoa powder, salt, and yeast, plus the caraway seeds and I'll have to get out the raisins, and which, which I won't measure. All of those ingredients I measured with these few things. First of all, all I had in here, these two, I put this on the scale and I poured water in with these. They're not even dirty. I don't even have to wash those. Okay, so I'm getting rid of those. This is my entire extent of dirty dishes. I used the flour, this full for the flour, all of it. This is just the trait of the scale that gets, you know, overflow dirty. I used this for, because of the cocoa powder lumps, and if I didn't have lumps, I would have scooped right from this, you know, canister of cocoa powder 
into something to measure it with and I wouldn't have even had the strainer or this spoon. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the oil went in this, first the oil and the molasses and one of these for flour and one of these for yeast. This is instead of all those measuring cups. You would have needed, you know, a measuring cup for water and then you would have needed a measuring cup for the molasses and a measuring cup for the bread flour. That's a different amount. And you would have needed a measuring cup for the rye flour. And all of them would have been a different amount. You might have needed a cup and a half of one and a cup and a quarter and another. And then the 21 grams of cocoa powder, it's probably about a quarter cup, I would imagine. I've had to use a quarter cup measure for that. And I would have had to get measuring spoons out for salt and for yeast. So this is all the dirty dishes. This is it. One bowl, two little ramekins, this for the liquid, and this for the cocoa butter. I mean, why would you want to get six or seven measuring cups dirty plus measuring spoons if you don't have to and your bread is going to turn out better, consistently better all the time when you use a flour-covered scale? <laughs> Um, a lot of you ask for a recommendation. I'm going to get this for a second to show you what this looks like. This is my scale. The brand name is E-Tech City. It's called the E-Tech City Food Scale on Amazon. It's under $20. It goes to the tenth of a gram, which I really, really like. And I love it so much, I have two. One is in the cupboard. I took the batteries out so they wouldn't, you know, so they wouldn't corrode. So look, this is it. This is my entire extent of dirty things to wash, not a million measuring cups. Weigh your ingredients. Auntie Ellen says so. <laughs> I wonder if you noticed my bright purple sparkly nails. I am really hard on my fingernails, so I don't like to pay for manicures very often. I use Color Street nail strips. They go on your nails like a sticker. They're dry instantly. You can go about your business. The only thing you can't do is get them wet for about 30 to 45 minutes and they have a million colors. Not all of you will want to be as obnoxious as I am in this bright color. I absolutely love them. I really try to be organized so nothing catches me by surprise. Oh crap, I'm not ready. So as soon as I press start, pretty much I get, if there's something to add, I get my little raisins out I didn't measure them. I just grab a handful or so. And these I coat with flour because they can be sticky and stick together. If you have a lot of extra flour in the bottom, you're going to want to shake some of that out or just when you pick them up with your fingers, kind of, you know, shake the extra flour out. And when I get the add beep, I don't pour them in all at once. I add them gradually, you know, in maybe three to four portions. So, um... It's been about 20 minutes. There's my timer going off, and I think that these little machines are going to start going anytime now. Yes, I really do set a timer for five minutes after my kneading begins. I don't just say it. I got a minute and a half, and then I will check to see if the dough is too wet or too dry. I have liquid, as in water, and I have flour standing by ready to put either one in, depending if either is needed. All right, five minutes is up. Let me see. Well, it is not sticky much. I have to remember that it has molasses, but it has not made a smooth dough ball. I'm gonna put just a teeny, teeny bit that's about, I would say, eight to 10 grams of flour. We'll see how that goes. That was zone number one. Sorry, I'm doing this myself. Zone number two, the sweet brown. About the same. Just gonna shake in a little flour. I imagine it's about a tablespoonful or eight to 10 grams. And Hello. This one looks better, doesn't it? But it's not dry and it's not 
Well, it's sometimes really challenging with um <laughs> with molasses, but I am gonna shake a little less, but just a tiny bit of flour in, and I'll check it in about a minute. By the way, I'm eating my orange crescent rolls for breakfast. There, there's a video. This is oh my god, they're a sour cream yeast dough. It's my Aunt Shirley's recipe. This is a, a whole one. These have been in the freezer <laughs> since Thanksgiving of 20. So they're perfect. I mean, they're absolutely delicious. I put them in my oven, my little Breville countertop oven, and reheated them from frozen on convection. They are just like they came out of the oven the first time. Seriously, freeze your stuff. Mm. So how amazing is it that that tiny bit of dough, I mean, tiny bit of flour rather, made such a big difference. We now have a beautiful dough ball. I can walk away from this one. It still feels, it doesn't feel sticky. No. It's pretty smooth. I'm gonna let it go. We'll check it again in a minute. And this one, about the same. I'm gonna give it another minute. Well, let's see. This is, by the way, number two. You know, I think it's fine. And, yep, it's all good. Smooth dough ball, smooth enough anyway. I don't think I need to add any more flour I think it's a happy dough ball and now really I can just kind of walk away well I'm waiting for the ad beat but other than that I can just walk away from the first two machines at least and they are set until the dough is complete since I'm making three loaves of bread I have prepared three loaf pans uh, this loaf pan is a USA USA pan that's upside down USA pan. Um, I like it, but I don't like it as well as I like my William Sonoma. Oops. Oh, it's on the inside. <laughs> William Sonoma Gold Touch. I just like it better. Seems more nonstick. So I have two of these and then one of those. This is absolutely fine. Um, I even have the old Wilton ones and they were fine too, but I've gotten fancy. Oh, there's my ad beep. Squirrel. <laughs> so, nope. Well, actually, that's the ad beep on the other machine. Um, but I'm waiting for this one, number three, to have the ad beep. So I'll go back over here for a second. Um, everyone's always asking me how big my loaf pans are. This is the measurement I use for a two pound loaf. And a two pound loaf is anywhere four to five, 400 grams, 500 grams, four cups of flour, that's a two pound loaf. If it's under four cups of flour or under about four or 500 grams, then it's a one and a half pound loaf. I only make, for the most part, I make two pound recipes. I have a couple that are one and a half pound. Okay, I gotta, I think my ad beep went off over here. Yep, there we go. My machine flashes ad, and that's how I know. So, I'm just going to pick up some raisins, put them in, let it go for a minute. You can hear that. And I will pick up some more raisins, and I'm kind of, you know, knock some of the flour off. Oh, look, I <laughs> have flour everywhere. Bring those in. And I will add the rest of the raisins off camera because I want to get them with the, get the flour. See, there was this much flour left over. That's probably about two, maybe three or four, maybe even five grams. I'm not going to weigh it. But that's extra flour that you did not need to put in your dough, but you did need to coat the raisin, so I 
pick the raisins out. I have poured the raisins with the flour into a big strainer and tap, tap, tap to get all the extra flour out. You could do that too. I didn't do that. I just kind of picked the raisins out and did this and call them that good. So my loaf pans are ready to go and my raisins have been added. Let's go take a look at that. I am nothing if not detailed people. So they're not all incorporated yet, but they will be. You get to see my face again now. Um, with the sweet brown bread or even with the caraway seeds for that matter, you can take this dough and make it in rolls. Why not? Dough is dough. You can take any recipe. Bread recipe is now a recipe. <laughs> I just did that by accident. Uh, crazy. Um, you can take any bread recipe and certainly make rolls. Um, the easiest rolls to make are what I call pull apart rolls, where you have a rectangular foil pan or casserole of some kind and you weigh your big blob of dough and you divide it out into either like 16 or 20 equal pieces by weighing them, roll them into balls and put the balls next to each other in a row. Um, and then they rise and they, you know, stick together on the common sides and you just pull them out and they're delicious. Um, for the sweet brown bread, you could put some oats on top and you'll have to egg wash them so that they'll stick. Um, sometimes I even mix a little honey or molasses in my egg wash with the brown bread recipe because it's fun <laughs> and because I like to do different things, as you know. All right, so I'm just going to check the raisins. Occasionally, I have taken the bread out to kind of try and mix them better myself. But let's see. Oops, I can't do this this way. Silly me. Okay, I had it on selfie mode. All right, so... It's looking good. The raisins are mixing in pretty well. Okay, I'm gonna leave you alone. So it is 11.44 a.m. my time, and this will be done at 12.43, so I have about an hour, but because I have my loaf pans ready, and what I did is I spray with nonstick spray and then put the parchment in, and the reason I do that is because it helps the parchment lay down. You don't have to use nonstick spray. I'm saying it just makes it easier, you know, for the parchment to kind of cling to the surface of the bread pans. So I will be back. Um, for you, it'll be about a second. For me, it'll be about an hour. And I get to go do something else with my time now. As you can hear, all three machines have finished kneading. This one says rise. I know you can't see that very well because of the glare. That one says rise. And that one says rise. So I'm going to tiptoe out of the kitchen and let the dough babies grow. Grow babies, grow. And all three of the doughs have risen. One at a time, I'm gonna take them out. Now, since I have three bread pans and two of the three breads look so close to the same, I marked one, two, and three on my um, parchment paper, that's it. All right, this doesn't need much of any shaping or anything, I'm just gonna, eh. Plop it in. And I kind of try to even out the top. So that's number one. And that is the pumpernickel with caraway. Now I'm grabbing number two. See, number two bread pan. And this is the sweet brown bread. Basically, it's the same as number one, except that it does not have the caraway seeds. So again, I'm just gonna play with a little, it's a little bit sticky, but when you use molasses, that makes it sticky. Stick it in there. 
and I just even it out with my hands. Again, there's my number two. And finally, number three, see? Number three bread maker. So I like to get the paddles out immediately. All right, a couple of raisins fell out, no biggie. it in. So if you've never used the dough cycle before, and if you're just making a loaf of bread, it isn't a whole lot of work. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, shape it kind of into a loaf. Put it in your loaf pan. Um, I'm not going to do this part in front of you, but it's on a lot of my videos. I'm going to go over to my oven. You can say this with me if you know. I'm going to set my oven at the lowest temperature, which is 170. I'm going to turn a timer on for only one minute. I am not going to heat the oven all the way to 170. I'm going to turn it on, set a timer for one minute. When that timer goes off, I'm going to turn the oven completely off. And then I'm going to put my dough in to rise for about 40 to 45 minutes. And then I will egg wash and top with whatever I want to top with. And that will be the baking phase. So again, when you are going for that rise in the oven, you turn it to your lowest temperature, whatever that may be. You might have 140, I think. Uh, my mom and dad's oven when I was growing up, the lowest temperature was 140. So, but only for one minute, no longer than a minute. You do not want to forget to set that one minute timer. If you are lucky enough to have a newer oven that has a proof um, proof setting, lucky, 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 you just turn that on and leave it on for the entire 40 to 45 minutes and it just keeps it, it probably heats it to about, I think, 80. And then it'll, it's just the perfect temperature the whole time. Um, there is, oh, I don't know if it's a controversy, if we were leaving these out to rise on my counter, as many, many people do, you would want to cover them either with a dish towel or with some plastic wrap that you sprayed with a nonstick spray or brush some oil on so it wouldn't stick to the dough because you would want to keep, or both, you might want to put the plastic wrap on and then, you know, the towel over to keep them warm. I do not cover my dough when it's rising in the oven because it stays consistently warm and there's no draft. So the oven doesn't dry out. The oven doesn't dry the dough out. Um, if, you, if it'll make you feel better and you wanna cover it if you're rising it in your oven, it's up to you. I don't ever feel the need to do that because this works for me. <laughs> so you do what works for you. And so I'm going to, after we turn the camera off, I'm going to put these into rise, and then I will show you uh, how I egg wash and whatever I'm gonna put on top. So I'm setting this timer for 40 minutes, and you can see they can all rise in the same oven. And they will all even bake in the same oven. They just might take a little longer. Have fun, dough babies. Rise. <laughs> Whoops. Don't know why I turned that timer off. As you can see, the dough babies have grown up <laughs> and they are ready to be baked into bread. Yay. So this is the Standard pumpernickel with caraway. This is the sweet brown bread. This is the one for my daddy with raisins. I'm going to egg wash, and just in case you're a little confused when you hear egg wash, it is very simple. It's one whole egg that I just beat up with my my uh, my you know my little brush, and I kind of fill my 
fill my hand like oh. so it's maybe I don't know a tablespoon of water I don't measure it it's not that important so I'm going to do a lovely egg wash it obviously won't make a dip much difference in the color because this is already a nice beautiful beautiful brown bread on uh, lighter colored breads it gives that golden kind of a satin sheen and it makes it pretty so i'm going to egg wash all of them first and then i will tell you what else i may or may not do give you options because if you watched very many of my videos you know I love to give you options so you can make it your own and I love when people say Ellen I made your French bread recipe but I substituted this for this and this for this and this for this and I'm thinking that's awesome I don't find that just that's not disagreeable to me that's exactly what I do with other recipes. I change it to suit my desires or my needs. You know, if you can't use butter and you use vegan butter or margarine or oil instead, if you have a dietary need or vegan or whatever, it's okay with me. I don't care if you change my recipes, it's all good. So on this first one, I am going to sprinkle just a very light coating of caraway seeds on top and it's really kind of more cosmetic. And I'm trying to decide whether I should also put cornmeal on it like I do. Eh, maybe not. I put cornmeal on my rye bread um, to give the crust a little extra crunch. So that one's done. I'm gonna go over to the third one and I am going to put, again, just a tiny, tiny cosmetic sprinkling, okay? Okay, so the one in the middle, obviously, we don't want the caraway seeds. You can just leave it egg washed. Um, I could, I was thinking I would drizzle just a little teeny bit of molasses on top and oh that's my oven and I'm just going to do this and then I haven't done this before so I'm winging it here but I'm hoping that it will spread and it will just kind of it's a sugar so I'm thinking it might kind of caramelize a little bit um, I didn't get something out that spread pretty well. Um, you can be amused by looking at this for just a second while I run to get something. But I forgot, I'm still in the room. <laughs> but I forgot about getting out the oats. So often we will see a sweet brown bread with an oat topping. And I wonder about this. I have no problem doing it. And I do think it looks pretty. But I wonder how this got started because there are no oats in this bread. So it's only a decoration for on top. But it does look like a traditional sweet brown bread this way, doesn't it? I think it does. So oats it is. Again, you don't have to do, you don't even have to use the egg wash. I mean, all of this is sort of cosmetic stuff and it's not something you must do. You could put a different kind of seed. You could put no caraway seeds, but raisins. Like this one has caraway seeds and raisins. You could do raisins and no caraway seeds. You could put chocolate chips in it. I don't know, you could do whatever you want. It's your bread. These are options that you get to choose. It's your freedom to make those choices, and it's fun to do that sort of thing. So the oven has beeped that it's heated up, although I usually give it another five minutes or so to make sure that it's at temperature. 
and I will bake these and they will usually take, I don't know, 35 to 40 minutes, but I don't trust anything but my handy dandy temperature probe thermometer. So when you pull this little probe out, what you do is, is I stick it in, and this is obviously after I think it's almost done baking. I would stick it in about there, kind of at an angle. And for these breads, you want it to be around 190, 195. If it gets to 200, that's okay. You don't really want it to be higher than 200. Um, closer to 190 is ideal for a mostly or partially whole grain bread like this. Um, with an enriched bread that has milk and eggs, you will want um, it closer to 200 degrees. So when you think it looks done, it might not be done, you must take its temperature. Absolutely not optional. So I'm going to put these in the oven and I will show you what they look like when they come out of the oven and then again later when they're sliced. And of course, the dough babies became beautiful, grown up. <laughs> I'm so weird today with this dough baby business, but beautiful breads. This is the pumpernickel with caraway, traditional pumpernickel. This one in the middle is the sweet brown, no caraway seeds with the oats on top. Ooh, some oats stuck on the side, like little eyeballs. Two eyes and a <laughs> mouth. <laughs> oh boy, too much caffeine. Um, and here is the raisin pumpernickel. So I can't show you the inside for three hours. I want them to be good and cool before I slice them. Beauties. Here is the pumpernickel with caraway. Perfect, beautiful crumb. And here is the sweet brown bread. No caraway, no raisins, all deliciousness. It smells so good. Oh, yes. And finally, here is the pumpernickel with caraway and raisins per my daddy's request. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you know what to do. If you not, don't, I'll tell you. Hold on. Please like, please subscribe, please message me via YouTube. Um, if you have questions for me, you can message me, you know, right from this, under this video, but you can also find me on Facebook to message me there if you're so inclined under Ellen Walker Hoffman. And um, Facebook is a little easier because if you need links or pictures, I can send them to you that way where the YouTube mess messages are a little more restrictive. So um, the recipe, as I told you earlier in the video, is if you look to the bottom right of the screen where I am right now, just at the bottom, your bottom right, right under that in the white part is an arrow, little teeny arrow, hard to find. Um, and you click that down and you will see the description. The recipe will be there. Thank you so, so much for watching. Happy to help with advice or questions. Anytime, just message me. I promise I will answer. Have a great rest of uh, February. There, isn't, there aren't too many days left of February. And stay warm if you're in the cold part of the country. And um, I'll talk to you with the next video. Love you all. Bye.